Today we're going to talk about breadboarding audio circuits and breadboards come in all sorts of sizes. Here's a mini one, a slightly bigger one, and then this large one that I've put a circuit on that we're going to look at today. They all feature the same layout in that these are joined together in rows and then there's a gap in the middle and then these are joined together in rows as well. Same with this one. So 1A is joined to 1B is joined to 1C across to 1F and then there's a gap and then 1G is joined to H, I, J, K and L and then all the twos are joined together, all the threes are joined together, etc. Here we have a one with a power rail as well and I'm using this for positive and ground. When you're first starting to learn how to breadboard circuits, I'd recommend using a bigger breadboard over a smaller one because it just gives you more space to lay out your components and see what's going on and troubleshoot your circuit. Here's the circuit we're building today on the breadboard. It's an Atari Punk console. And my first tip is to familiarise yourself with schematics. The more familiar you are with the different symbols, such as this 555 symbol, resistor, various types of capacitors and potentiometers in this case, the better you'll get at translating what's on this piece of paper onto your breadboard. So with that in mind, let's look at a few other tips which can help that process. My second tip is to print or draw the schematic out and then lay all your components on the particular places on the schematic. When you're first learning how to breadboard, this ensures that you've got all the components you need to create the circuit and you haven't missed anything. You can also have a double check and make sure your values are correct. So you'll see here, I've got an NE555 timer IC on its schematic symbol. And the same here, two potentiometers. I've got a resistor here, two non-polarized capacitors, and my polarized capacitor at the end. So I know I've got all the bits that are required to build this Atari Punk console. My third tip is to use the data sheet of the component you're working with. This is an NE555 timer. So I found the correct data sheet, NE555 timer. And here is a diagram of its pin out. You'll see on the schematic that the pin outs aren't in order. They're just real on the schematic in the appropriate place. So for example, control, pin five, threshold, pin six, discharge, pin seven, VCC, pin eight, but ground's down here, not up here. So know your IC, and the best way to do that is to download the data sheet. You can put it on your phone or computer, you don't have to print it out. And here it is, and I can actually put it there and see which pin is which. When you're first prototyping audio circuits, it's a really good idea to use a battery or batteries to supply the power, as there's only so much current a battery can supply, and therefore you're less likely to damage yourself or the circuit. It's also a good idea to plug in the ground lead first. In my case, I have a negative ground, so that's the black lead. So I would plug in that first. So here's our breadboarded Atari Punk console. Let's see if it sounds like an Atari Punk console. It does indeed. It's not the most spectacular synth in the world, but it's something that you can quickly and easily build on a breadboard. It's fairly easy to troubleshoot if it doesn't work. And you can just follow the steps that I've been through in this video to build something like this yourself.